Welcome, everybody, to the Azure for Sports podcast. It is just me today. Well, not truly just me. I've got a very special guest joining us, Elizabeth Baraud from GitHub. Welcome, Elizabeth. How are you? Hi, John. Thank you. I'm doing well. Awesome. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited you're here as well. It's about time we had someone with brains because I was definitely <laughs> bringing the property value down around. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. GitHub Copilot is what we're going to be discussing today, and it is a hot topic in sports, um, primarily because of the of the opportunity of shortcutting the development time needed to get applications out um, at the pace of innovation that is required as well. So you've been at GitHub for about just over a year now, um, and what a year it's been, right? We're talking about AI infused everything everywhere, um, as as you know with with our our, both of our employers, Microsoft, um, Copilot is the word of the moment. They are everywhere. But GitHub was actually first mover on this, right? So you had GitHub Copilot and released it to market before any of other other mag uh, magnificent Copilots here. Talk me through your role, what you do as a systems engineer at GitHub, and how that that pace of innovation, especially around AI over the last year, has been for you. It's been a whirlwind, I would say. So. Yeah, Copilot was released uh, about two years ago, but it didn't really blow up until we released Copilot Business last December. And that has been a really big shift on my day to day. So I'm a solutions engineer here at GitHub. I've been uh, working with Copilot for over a year now or coming up to a year. And uh, really my job at GitHub is to ensure that customers are able to use the product effectively and that um, I give them the opportunity to to see all the new products and features. So I do demonstrations, I talk uh, the technical product, and I love it. I've been at GitHub, yeah, a little over a year and it's been a real highlight. Before, awesome. yeah, before joining GitHub, I was a, a senior software engineer, primarily worked on backend development systems uh, around identity and access management. And uh, yeah, I made the switch to solutions engineering and joined GitHub and yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Awesome. That's great. And that's cool to hear. So how does that world then differ now, right? You came from doing identity and access management to now doing arguably probably one of the coolest things in tech today, right? Is you're using GitHub Copilot. How does, how does those two worlds contradict each other? So I actually say, I think they go well together because when you talk about Copilot and I'm talking with developers daily about how they can use the tool effectively, I use the tool all the time and to be able to relate to them, to understand, you know, the best use cases, how I use it, how I prompt Copilot. I'm so glad that I have a developer background so that I can kind of relate and make sure that developers aren't wasting their time on the the day-to-day -day tasks of boilerplate code now that we can use Copilot because it's a, just a huge time saver and it's, it's it helps with developer happiness. Yeah, absolutely. And and I can say the dichotomy of you and me, I do not have a developer background, right? But I get to, to sort of mess around and, and play with some of these things as well and get up Copilot and actually made a working application myself, right? Through a great deal of help from my, my, my programming pair, if you would, right? Um, which is cool. And cool thing is today we're going to have a live demo. Right, Correct. so we're gonna we're gonna tempt the the demo gods here. We're gonna do this live. <laughs> we're gonna do it. The the only thing that I'm a little bit upset about right off the bat here is that your R two D two in the background is way bigger than my R two D two in the background here. Oh, so very nice. <laughs> I need some catching up to do over here. But why don't I'm gonna throw over? We're gonna actually do some sharing here. I'm gonna throw it over to you and let's walk us through um, what GitHub is, what GitHub Copilot is, um, and then take us through some demo. And we're gonna ask you some questions along the way if that's okay. Sounds perfect. Awesome. The floor is yours. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. And today I want to talk about, you know, what GitHub Copilot is and how it's able to help developers. So today, Copilot is the world's most widely adopted AI developer tool. And this was based on the most recent 2023 Stack Overflow developer survey, where we found that 55% of developers who were using AI tools were using GitHub Copilot. And it's just, wow. show, yeah, and it really shows just the impact it can have on developers' workflow that they're continuing to use this productivity tool. And today I want to cover, you know, a technical overview of Copilot, a demonstration to show you some of the use cases and how to use Copilot effectively. And I'm going to touch on some of the best practices. 
I talk about Copilot every day. I use the product. And there's definitely some key things to focus on around prompt engineering, the context of the application you're working in that will help you use it in a more effective way. Um, and then Q&A, John, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Or to oh, it's coming. You know, it's <laughs> guaranteed. I'm, I'm going to do it right now. So we hear the words prompt engineering a ton, whether mm -hmm. it relates to GitHub Copilot or ChatGPT from, from um, Azure OpenAI, um, or just in general, conversational or generative AI comes with this term prompt engineering. What does that mean to you? So prompt engineering and prompt crafting is really what powers LLMs to provide back a proper suggestion. It's important for developers to think about that they are still the pilot. It's their logic that you're providing the LLM to know what to do. And prompt crafting is such a key thing to focus on as you're, as you're using AI. Is that something, is that something that can be taught or is it basic because i heard from someone right i i was dealing with a, a um a sports team and one of the owners said to me that the person who has the best ai solution is the person who asks the best questions right so and i completely i i, I agree with that one but the actual act of asking questions is that something that can be learned or is that something that we need just inherently someone's good at or someone isn't good at it's a great question. I would say, you know, in terms of Copilot and developers being the ones prompting this, engineers are problem solvers. So we're able to think about things in a different way and trying to provide all the information and requirements gathering. That's part of engineering. So I feel like we're almost at an advantage when using AI because we know the logic we want to implement. And that logic, as long as it's in natural language, is what's going to help Copilot uh, just drive the suggestion. So I'd say it can be taught, but engineers, they already know what to do. Awesome. Awesome. All right, let's go. I'm, I'm, so, I'm geeking out. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, first thing I want to touch on is, you know, how does Copilot work? So Copilot is an IDE plugin. So it lives where the developers, developers will be coding. In this case, we have four IDEs supported. Visual Studio, NeoVim, VS Code, and JetBrains IDEs. It's extremely simple to get started. You go to the marketplace. You would download the plugin like any other um, extension within your IDE. You sign into GitHub once you have a license, and you're ready to go. In order to prompt Copilot, you use natural language. We were just talking about prompt engineering. But another important key to focus on is the context of the application you're working in. So you'll see on my screen here, I have a few open tabs. Now, the context of the open tabs, as well as the natural language prompt, are what's included to be sent to our Copilot service. Once that uh, prompt is sent to the service, we use an LLM to generate the suggestion back. Now, at this time, everything is uh, encrypted and at transit and at rest, and we're not collecting any data telemetry on the suggestions accepted or the prompt that is sent to Copilot. And that's something I can pause there, John, if you have questions. I, yeah. I definitely want to touch on the, uh, the the privacy piece. Yeah, that's a biggie, right? Because when we deal with sports organizations, the data that they have, their IP is extremely valuable to them. It's their competitive advantage, if you would, right? What, Garrett, I know you just, you ran through here, but what safeguards do we have in place that there isn't any preventable data loss or there isn't any... Um, opportunity for data leakage that could compromise their data sets and they use as competitive advantage? Yeah, great question. So we have privacy statements around all of the GitHub Copilot uh, features and what data is actually collected. The only data that we do collect telemetry on is around the customer or the developer using the tool. We do collect telemetry on acceptance rates, the, the language it was accepted in, and the interactions with the tool but nothing around the data. And that's really a key differentiator of Copilot business is that we guarantee there will never be um, any training of the model if you do not want it to. Um, and the Copilot business is actually not even an option. I kind of was hinting there, we have a, another license that's coming out for custom models, but in this case, we will not be training your data in any way. Um, okay. in, in terms of protecting IP, there is a settings 
uh, configuration for Copilot business, where if you do not want um, any public code match, meaning Copilot, the way the LLM was trained was on all publicly available code. So there is potential for a suggestion to match public code. Okay. But with the settings configuration, you can make sure that if Copilot were to suggest a suggestion with 150 characters or more of matching public code, we won't provide the suggestion. It will be blocked. Um, okay. So you have that that guarantee there. That's interesting because we hear a lot, right? That w one of the top questions we got is, how do I prevent you, the the ambiguous you guys, right? <laughs> training yeah. GPT-5, if you would, on yeah. all the data that I'm providing it to you. So I'm giving you free training data. I'm giving you free resources to go and make something else that you're going to monetize. We hear that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the way really we, we use an LLM or large language model that was originally trained by OpenAI, and it was trained on all publicly available code, like I mentioned. And we have to put in those safeguards to make sure that businesses are protected. And one thing I want to point out with this LLM, because it was trained on all publicly available code, the types of suggestions that Copilot can provide back isn't limited to a specific language or subset of frameworks. It can help you with infrastructure as code uh, for your Docker container images or any framework that is part of open source, you can have suggestions on. And it's something to think about as you uh, are using the tool and what you need to protect. It's not just your code. We're, be, we're looking out for uh, your infrastructure as code in all areas of the SDLC. That's incredible. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Now, with GitHub Copilot, um, it's an IDE plugin, like I mentioned, but there's two features to it. Um, autocomplete, and the next thing I'm going to focus on is Copilot Chat. So the autocomplete feature of Copilot, at its core, is able to convert comments to code, autofill repetitive code, and then show alternatives based on the suggestions provided back. That last point is key. I like to point out, you know, the developers, they're still the pilot. They don't have to accept these suggestions. Copilot's just there in the background working through um, things that, you know, maybe they want to do or suggesting comments. You can definitely still ignore it. That's interesting, right? So what, so talk me through a little bit here. I told you I was going to be interrupting you everywhere. <laughs> no, it's perfect. <laughs> talk me through what these are. So how is the providing alternatives a powerful mechanism? So say, for example, I'm a coder and I go in and I'm using this and I'm used to certain ways of writing my code. I'm used to writing in a certain way or commenting in a certain way. Whatever, and it gives me an alternative. How does that, talk me through that benefit. Yeah, and that, well, I'm going to, the first part of your question was around like, if you're writing in your code and you're following a certain practice. Now, I'm, I'm going to touch on that because Copilot does contextualize to the project you're working in. So okay. if you have, say, an open tab or you're following a pattern of how you traverse through an API response, it'll reuse those patterns in other suggestions. Now, the alternative piece is nice because for every single solution Copilot provides back, you can really choose from 10 different solutions that it synthesizes. And that benefit really comes to, you know, maybe I wanted it slightly different, or you weren't happy with the efficiency or the okay. language that it okay. used. Um, it really just gives you the flexibility, which you can go really well with uh, Copilot Chat, which I'll get into next. That's awesome. Um, so are you saying then it, it learns me? So me as the the coder, it learns the way that that I input code. It learns my, con it contextualizes me for, for lack of an argument. Uh, I'm not going to say that it learns because that would be the training the model piece that we just said we verify we Fair do enough. not do. Yep. But the um, following patterns it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, but me Big being a... Here. <laughs> yeah, a huge one. So let's just completely put that on the table. Right? So it's not learning from me. So it's, if it's learning from me, it's learning to be a shitty coder. I mean, let's just be <laughs> honest right now, right? But it's, it is just picking up the patterns, the repeatable patterns from me. So it is more it's less of a jarring experience. It's more comfortable and in my workflow as I do it today. Exactly. And awesome. the the repetitive code, like the autofill, that's where I really feel like Copilot shines for me is that it reduces the amount of times I have to search online for okay. boilerplate code. Got it. Like searching for regex patterns. That's not vital to the business function I'm trying to complete, 
but it's required. Like the yeah. the types of things developers don't want to be doing but have to is where Copilot can fill in the gaps. Huge time saver. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then the second piece here is Copilot chat. So Copilot chat, uh, you'll notice there's a slight difference in the IDEs here. It's available in VS and VS Code. And then we are just announced last week at GitHub Universe that it's available in private beta for JetBrains. Now, the difference with Copilot chat is it uses a slightly different model. We're transitioning to GPT-4, but it's a conversational AI. And honestly, it's an absolute game changer um, because the autocomplete is helpful for the repetitive tasks, the boilerplate code. But chat, you can now ask Copilot questions. You can ask it to generate entire unit test suites, wow. to propose fixes, to help with your debugging. And for the big O fans, you can even help it with efficiency. So it's really impressive on everything that you can tweak. And I just, I geek out about chat. It's awesome. <laughs> that is incredible, right? And it's becoming such a way of doing things now that following in that pathway of doing things is so smart. Yeah. And you think about a question I get from customers is how does chat differentiate from other chat tools out there? You know, chat GPT blew up the scene. It was so, so popular, yep. but how is Copilot different? And there are three main reasons. One, our LLM is built for code. So we're making sure that you're not asking it what recipe I should make this evening. The, the second is that it lives within your IDE. So it keeps you in the flow. You're not having to go online. And then the third is it's context aware. So leaning back on the fact that you don't have to provide the chat all the information about the application you're trying to write. It knows from the open tabs that, hey, I'm trying to implement a unit test for the code block I have highlighted. So really, it's keeping in the same flow is what's so helpful. That's awesome. That's absolutely brilliant. All right. Well, enough talk. I, I want to hop into the demo piece. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So just fun fact, Copilot is probably the most interesting thing to demo because it's honestly like the ultimate live demo because not only is there a dependency on me, but there's this LLM in question that it's probabilistic. It, I get back to different solutions every time. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's take it for a ride. Let's see how yeah. we do. All right. So first some background on this uh, application I have. Now I created this for uh, this meeting today, or I should say podcast with John today. Um, and it's a sports statistics application. It's a Java web app. Um, and just for some background, this is the REST controller where I have a seasons um, that I'm grabbing. So this is loosely based off of football. I know um, Thanksgiving's coming up. I was thinking it might be festive. I know there's gonna be a lot of watching of football uh, this weekend. So well played. <laughs> yeah, I have some endpoints here for seasons to save, delete, to get all the seasons. And then if I go to my season object, I have the year, the wins and losses, the yards for and against the team, as well as some of the uh, the turnovers. So fumbles, interceptions um, based on what we've recovered and what our opponents have. So in today's demo, I, I want to start with chat. I'm going to highlight this file I have here and use one of the predefined slash commands of Copilot chat. And I can type slash here, and you can see I have some predefined commands. The one I'm going to use here is explain. This just gives you a prompt of what you want Copilot to do. And since I've highlighted the entire file, that's going to be the reference that chat is going to take into the context. So I press Enter here. You can see it's taken 1 through 49, so the whole file. And it's letting me know this is Java code. I mentioned that as a REST controller. I'm not sure if I remembered to mention it was a Spring Boot, but Copilot has reminded me. And then it gives me a detailed outline of this entire uh, REST controller, as well as like each of the methods and what the auto wire and what the statistics repository is doing. The statistics repository here, it's going to be accessing my database. So think about how you would use this in a day to day. I consider this probably helpful for someone who was maybe assigned a ticket but didn't have full background of the application they're trying to complete. A new dev trying to understand um, maybe a new language they're not familiar with. So there, there are a lot of different ways that you can utilize this explain feature. 
This is awesome. And I love that last one that you brought up, that new language, right? So mm -hmm. that's one thing that has always, and, and with the, de the developers that we work with in the, in the sports teams, um, because a lot of these teams, they, they are small, so they have multiple hats that they need to wear. They're not only a dev, right? They don't have that luxury. They also have a thousand other things to do, but they know a language mm -hmm. and that's it. So that's what you're going to get, right? Whether that's the most efficient for the task at hand is irregardless because that's what I know and this is what you're going to get your application in. This is very, very cool to, to help stimmy some of those issues there. Yeah, and that's honestly a perfect um, kind of use case of around you know, learning new things. Just from personal experience, I mentioned that I used to be an engineer in primarily backend development. Since using Copilot, I primarily only written in TypeScript. And I never thought that would have been possible but because I have the semantics behind what I'm trying to write, I don't necessarily know the log or the uh, the syntax of uh, TypeScript too well. But Copilot's able to fill in the gaps, and I never thought I would be able to uh, learn a new language. But I'm telling you, you can around the holidays. It's something to experiment. It's fun. That's awesome. And 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 sticking with that, never thought I would be able to. I never thought I'd be able to write an application that actually ran. <laughs> Well, I did it. <laughs> one thing that's cool too is as you're you know running your application and maybe you have a terminal output and trying to debug, Copilot Chat can help you there. You can copy and paste your terminal output, yep. say why is this uh failing, and then it could cross-reference with the different classes. It is right. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call my uh, application um not really co-authored by GitHub Copilot, really sort of authored by GitHub Copilot and 10% uh, <laughs> prompted by Flynn. There we go. That's pretty much what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, you're still you're still the pilot. It's it's funny. A lot of customers ask around, you know, why aren't we contributing code back to Copilot? We want to monitor, you know, what suggestions Copilot's providing and what our developers are accepting. And we still do the commit and author it by the the committer and not Copilot even yep. if maybe it was entirely by Copilot because it's still the developer who's responsible. And honestly, Copilot doesn't write perfect code. Uh, we still recommend that you run it through all your uh, native CI, making sure you're doing security scans, because you need to treat it as if your developers wrote it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, we brought up that security thing here. So that, that is critically important that, um, and it's just like the chat GPT functionality, right? Is that fact check it. Have a look over yeah. it. Don't just believe it as gospel, right? It's there to help you. It is very much as we've been honing in on that, that co-pilot experience here. Um, maybe jumping the gun a little bit here, but if how how hard is this to implement, say, at one of these smaller teams um, where you have a handful of developers at best and they do have multiple hats on over here and they go, okay, great. We're going to go to, to get a co-pilot because it's going to save me time during my day, which is absolutely true. It's going to help me be relevant with XYZ language to learn that, which is absolutely true. But how hard is that getting started? The getting started piece, it's, it's different for every organization. Now, if it's small, if it's big, how you, someone typically rolls out tools. But in this case, if maybe the developers had free range, all they really need to do once they have a co-pilot license install the plugin and start prompt crafting. And that's what I would focus oh, wow. on as you roll it out is getting the message across to developers that you need to prompt this effectively and clearly with, with intent. You need to have a goal in order to actually like the suggestions. Right. And I'll, I'll touch on the prompt crafting, like some of the examples of a good and bad prompt and how it really does adjust the copilot suggestion. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, so we just did the explain here with Copilot chat. Um, but if I go back to the seasons, I, I mentioned I have like yards for, yards against, wins, losses. And I have this custom repository where it's completely blank. Now, typically when you start to use Copilot, you know, at your rollout, it's not usually a new application. That's why I've, I've built a, like an existing app that I'm going to add functionality to. And also it helps with Copilot suggestion, the more context it has. So this context repository, I'm going to um, ask Copilot to oops, uh, calculate the win percentage per season. So this is the natural language comment in Java, it's forward slash slash. When I press enter here on the bottom screen quickly, there's this Copilot head. You saw it, it, it 
did a quick refresh. So it was calculating. And it's defined this method called get win percentage per season. Pretty simple. The next thing I want to do is ask Copilot to calculate the yard differential. Let's see. I, I always do misspellings, but you know, Copilot still knows what I'm doing. Just to throw that uh, FAQ out there, you can misspell uh, the yard differential here. And then um, here, I actually didn't even type anything. Copilot's just assuming that the next thing I may want to calculate is the turnover differential per season. Awesome. Yeah. So when I press enter, the way I accept this is just do a simple tab. So this is created into this brand new um, repository class. But to the right, I have a implementation class. So I actually need to implement these methods I defined. Now, once I press enter here, let's see what happens. I'm pretty sure Copilot will. Yep, I didn't do anything there. Copilot knows just to grab those uh, individual methods and then grab each um, here return value. It just defaulted to null. Now, this is an example that I wish Copilot actually had implemented these. A null response isn't great. Um, so this is an example of me. I'm going to open the Copilot side panel to get an alternative. So for every suggestion Copilot provides, it synthesizes 10 different solutions. Wow. Here, yeah, if I go to, let's see, differential per season. This one looks pretty good, let's see. Add. Actually, I'm not too happy with these responses. Let me go, I'm gonna X out of this. And I'm going to say copilot to, I'm going to not do them all at once to try to do them individually. You kind of have to work with it sometimes. Calculate the win percentage per season. Say implement um, method. So that's referencing yep. this method. Provides the override. Hmm. Let's see. Copad's being finicky. All right, let's see. The demo gods are at work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, actually, this one, okay. This one looks good. I like this one now. So I'm going to go with suggestion four. Uh, and that's simply a copy and paste over into the window. Yes. Yeah, now you guys know it's it's definitely not pre-recorded. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, true. Very true. So here I have, all right, let's just briefly look over that I'm happy with this. So I want to make sure, so it's con asking my, um, it's using the seasons repository. I need to define the seasons repository first. There you go. Okay. So now it's going to be referencing accessing my database, mm -hmm. filtering through all my seasons, getting the wins, losses. Now these uh, values here, I have the season in an open tab. So you notice it's reusing methods that already exist. It's yeah. getting the wins, it's getting the losses. It's not suggesting that I create new methods and that would be horrible <laughs> because yes. if your copilot's gonna create more work for you, it's, it's meant to save time. So it is going to look at those open tabs. That's awesome. Yeah, and setting the win percentage here, add and then return list. Okay, so this all looks good. Now let's see how we can use Copilot chat in tandem. So for example, this turnover differential, it's looking at the fumbles and interceptions minus the fumbles recovered and the receptions reco interceptions recovered. So it is actually looking at, uh, that was good logic. Um, now if I highlight these methods and ask Copilot to put these Actually, I'm going to say, um, put this all into a method that sends all the season stats. So I see my reference here is lines 13 through, I think it, yeah, took 58. 
And here it's putting all of that information. If I wanted to create maybe a reusable method, I could use that instead, instead of having individual uh, right. methods. I could even ask it to instead create a statistics object, I'll say season statistics object for this class or for this method, I should say. So it's going to look at this method it already created. And now it's creating a new class for me with all the different stats that I had defined earlier. So everything that you're putting into the chat here, it, it retains in its context, right? So it's going to reference yes. what it's done before. All right, awesome. Yeah. The only thing it won't do if I, if I have this class here, it's not going to create the file for me. Okay. One thing we're working on, um, well, actually it's available now, is for a uh, new this new here would create yep. an entirely new workspace. Now, if I wanted to create a new Java app or create a new node API, I would just ask this new and then put the prompt of the workspace and define what I want inside it. And it would create a new project for me. So it can create entire projects, just not individual files. Yet. Okay. Yeah. And then one thing I want to show, you know, as we added this new functionality is the ability to write unit tests. I feel like, Unit tests are something developers never want to do. It's a great use, use case for Copilot to help with your test coverage because it's so easy to define. If I highlight this new implementation class I have, and if I use one of the predefined slash commands of tests and press enter, it's saying, this is how you can write unit tests for the statistics repository. It's provided a mock framework. Here it's using Mockito. Mm -hmm. And then gives me an entire unit test suite that I could create a file and insert into. That's awesome. <laughs> it's one of my favorite features. Um, you know, it just guessed of what type of uh, unit test framework I wanted to use. Now, if you wanted to use a specific uh, framework, you would just let Copilot know and type it in the chat. That's awesome. Cool. Well, and the last thing I'll show as well with the demo is you mentioned developers wearing many hats. Yes. So one thing developers need to do a lot is manage their own pipelines. So Copilot can help with YAML. And I have an example of a blank GitHub Actions YAML file where I'm going to define how I want to create the CI for this application. I want to create a, a build process for the Java app and define the, the type of infrastructure it's going to run on. So in this case, for YAML, the comment is that pound sign. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna tell it to trigger the CI workflow on push or pull request to the main branch. When I press enter, this is the GitHub Actions YAML syntax. And I can go ahead and tab and accept. Um, it's suggesting that I define jobs that will run in parallel. I'm only going to run on a, a single machine here. I'm going to tell it to uh, define a job on a Linux machine that will build this Java application using Maven, which is the build system I've chosen. Press Enter. And here it's defined. My machine, it's using Ubuntu latest image, um, the actions to set up my Java environment, and then using the maven b build package and then dash the palm file. So that's literally like over 10 lines of code you created in one sentence. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's super, it's, yeah, it's, it's really helpful for, um, this is the type of task that I'm talking about where you'd have to look up the specific type of syntax for this yes. um, CI tool. You don't have to use GitHub Actions. This is just the example I'm using. You could use any CI tool. And as long as it's in open source, Copilot can provide great suggestions on it. That's incredible. So as, as someone who is, has come into this world here, um, on, on your day-to-day -day here, how much time would you say on average you are saving through this new paradigm of interacting with code, through natural language? 
That's a good question. I, I, it's hard for me to put it towards a number and sometimes I hesitate to because one thing that it really impacts me is the developer happiness piece. It's great that I'm saving Solid. time yeah. and I know that I'm doing it, but I'm just a happier developer when I use the tool because I'm not, wa I just, I can feel I'm not wasting my time. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a good outlook, right? Because I mean, we, we interface with developers on a daily basis throughout the, the sports ecosystem here and not one of them have I ever heard say, I'd love to write more code. I love to sit down and just type more lines of code, more please, right? Says no one ever. And this is getting them there. So what about what about existing code, right? If someone's got an application that maybe they didn't even write, that they've inherited, they've joined an organization, they've inherited this application, how does GitHub Copilot help with existing or pre-existing code? It can help in a few areas. Um, you know, I showed the explain um, it can also help with refactoring. So I've seen customers, I, I work with some financial institutions, not as applicable here, but that use COBOL that are transitioning from COBOL to Java. Um, so if you're on a legacy application, you kind of want to revamp it or refactor, that's a use case. Um, but for existing applications, I find that you typically have better suggestions because Copilot has more to work with, more patterns to follow. Um, but I think it works honestly better with existing applications. And if you have an application that's well built out, um, I would suggest you use Copilot because if you're starting from scratch, um, that's actually where I find Copilot struggles the most. If I have a blank file that I write, um, say I wrote, had this statistics application, I wrote statistics.py, it was my new Python app. Copilot would have nothing to work off of. It has nothing to draw from the context right. or any patterns. So um, existing apps are a great, great way to use Copilot. So what about, and, and this is more prevalent than anyone would probably care to admit, right? Is an application that is old, could be Cobalt, right? Could be Fortran. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's there, but it just works. No one touches it because Bob, who did it, left the building five <laughs> years ago, and but he created it on his first week at the job, and he had 30 years on the job. So this is the decades-old application that just works, does one task that is needed, but we desperately need to modernize it because we need to migrate to the cloud or whatever, or we need to infuse AI and all those kind of things there. Does it help in scenarios like that as well? Yes, it can. The only um, caveat I would say is with the... Uh, model, and I mentioned it was trained on open source, the suggestions are better the more popular the language. Now, if you're on a modern application, you're using Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, C++, you're fine. And you're really going to get great results from Copilot. If you're using a very unique framework, maybe a custom language that even your company created, then Copilot will struggle. Um, okay. And I, I say struggle, but like, yeah, it, it really won't provide as good as suggestions as, as it would with Python because um, that's such a popular language. Yep, got it. All right, that makes sense. So this has been amazing, right? I mean, I, I it, it blows my mind because it just, I think to your point around developer happiness, right? It just speaks to getting away from the mundane, a lot like the other co-pilots that we built as well, right? When it just doing those highly repetitive tasks and just, they kind of just drain on you, right? It just takes that away. But it's for me and the personal experience, it's such a learning tool as yep. well, right? Cause I, I mean, I'm, I'm not great at best, right? But it is so informative and teaching me what I'm doing wrong, but also great ways to do it as well. So that I'm just developing better habits the more I use it. Yep. And really the, the developer happiness, the habits, people are seeing it. And based on our surveys, I mean, we have so many stats around Copilot. You know, it makes me this much more effective. But I, I, I really, I always grab this subset because the, the message that developer productivity goes beyond just speed, that we're helping with the mental effort, the more satisfying work. So not doing the boilerplate code, the regex patterns, the unit tests, developers want to innovate and they want to create new features. If you can remove the toil of the, the functionality that isn't vital, they will be happier. And again, staying in your flow, 
I mean, the amount of times I don't need to go and read through angry Stack Overflow comments now, <laughs> and I'm able to just ask Copilot chat is so helpful. Um, and yeah, I love using it. That's awesome, and and I and well said, right? I mean, I think these three stats are, are just enormous, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot, mm -hmm. Elizabeth. Now, so where do you think this is going? Right? Where, what do you think is coming? Because this is I mean, this is mind blowing to say the least, right? But in in true form to okay, this is fantastic. What's next, right? What do you think is coming up next? How do we get even better and change even more things with infusing AI into our daily process to help us? It's a great question. So we're constantly working on improving the copilot experience in the IDE. But what you'll notice at GitHub is we're trying to incorporate AI in other parts of the developer's workflow. So we've started at the IDE. We're actually migrating to the CLI. So now oh. you can ask questions around copilot CLI, list your folder structures, but deploy even deploy local applications. And so coming from the CLI to the IDE, what we're seeing now is we're incorporating copilot into github.com. So we announced mm -hmm. last week at GitHub Universe, there's a new um, offering called GitHub or GitHub Copilot Enterprise, where you can have Copilot write your PRs. You can have Copilot um, search your documentation and ask it questions about all the code living in GitHub. Amazing. So we're really trying to embed it into other areas of the SCLC so that we can incorporate the same happiness. That's incredible. I just the and the the thing that really gets me, and I said at the beginning of the of the podcast as well, is just that pace of innovation right? Mm -hmm. Is that we just land something that is completely mind blowing like this. And all of a sudden you are coming up and the GitHub universe was packed full of these announcements, right? But you come up with these next thing and it's like, wow, right? It's breakneck pace and, and it's useful, right? I think one of the cool takeaways I have from this is using AI because it makes these stats notwithstanding, but it makes our lives easier to get on and do the core thing that we're smart at, right? Which is building that experiential output from an application, building that business outcome attached to an application versus spending all of our time on an application and forgetting what the end goal is because we're fighting with code or we're yes. changing IDEs in the middle of it because it must be a tool problem versus a new problem, <laughs> right? All those kinds yes. of things. I just yeah. think it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, no, I can agree more. And it's really an exciting time for developers to try the tool experiment. And it really is impacting just all areas of the SDLC, like I talked about with the CI, the infrastructure. Um, yeah, it's exciting to be a part of it all. Yeah, it really is. Maybe we're going to rename it to AI development life cycle versus oh. software development life cycle, right? That's the first I've heard that. That's, there we go. You, we you should trademark it. that. <laughs> we've coined the term. You heard it here first. We've date stamped it. We've recorded it. This Perfect. is it, right? Yep. Only on Azure for Sports do you get these insights. Come on now. Right? Listen, <laughs> we are our own co-pilots right now. But this is amazing. Elizabeth, thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for going through the demo. This was super yeah. exciting, and, and it went off without a hitch. I love how you got a little bit of a roadblock, and you're like, hold on a minute, and you just worked it out immediately and did it. That was amazing. Yeah, you really you have to work with Copilot, um, and it's just to show you the developer still in control. Sometimes I wish Copilot would just do everything for me, but you know we're not there yet. Not there yet. I love that operative <laughs> word yet. So we're gonna we're gonna um, drop a couple of links in the uh, in the description when we post this out. Um, but where can developers go? to get started today? So they, um, it depends if they have a um, GitHub account manager to reach out to their GitHub account manager to receive a Copilot license that can be um, given to you by your GitHub administrator. Or you can always just, um, for your individual account, purchase a GitHub uh, Copilot for individuals. Awesome, perfect. Again, thank you so much. I know that we have a lot of demand in our sports properties. Um, for this, for all the reasons that we spoke about before, but that ease of use and, and getting more back in your day to do go do the other 500 things that they're tasked with as well is just a killer app for this. So Elizabeth, again, thank you so much for your kindness coming on and thank you for going through this. It's been truly awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much, John. No worries. And thank you everyone for tuning in and listening. This has been Azure for Sports. I'm John Flynn, your host. I'm super excited for you guys to provide feedback on this and stay tuned for the next episode coming up soon. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.